Someone count how many times I say tightness or tight upper back in this video. Hey guys, welcome back to my channel and welcome to episode 5 of Powerlifting Basics. In this episode, I'll be going over how to bench press with proper form like a powerlifter. I'll be going up setup, positioning, breathing, execution, cues, and basically everything you need to know to bench press with good form and good technique. As always, timestamps will be in the description box below. Also, I just want to give a quick disclaimer, I'm not a certified coach or I have like any certifications. This is based off of a ton of research advice from my coach and also two and a half years of powerlifting experience if you want to see how i got into powerlifting watch my two-year powerlifting transformation here also as i will mention several times in this video this is personally how i bench press but someone with a different anatomy will press differently than i do so it's good to play around with everything and find what works best for you Thus, as I said in episode 1 of my powerlifting basic series, it's good to watch a variety of different lifters perform the bench press. Next, I'll go over equipment really quickly, but if you want an in-depth video of all my equipment, check out this video. So for bench press, the most important pieces of equipment are your wrist straps and your shoes. So first of all, for shoes, you want to find a shoe that gives you a firm stance on the ground. I used to wear Converse for benching, but at my last meet, it was hard to see if my feet were fully planted on the ground because the bottom of Converse are flexible, so it seemed like my feet were on the ground fully. Watch your feet! So it took a while for them to give me the start command, which tired me out. So I would recommend something with a firm bottom, something like Vans or weightlifting shoes, which is what I wear. As always, stay away from cushioned shoes like running shoes and tennis shoes. I will talk about wrist wraps later, but mostly what they do is they protect your wrists and make sure you can't bend your wrist over that much. So if you wear wrist wraps, you can't bend them super backwards and wrist wraps allow you to have better stacked wrist. Okay, so there's something I forgot to mention. Some people do use a belt when they bench and what a belt can do is it can increase your intra-abdominal pressure and for some people it allows them to be tighter. I don't wear a belt when I bench. I've tried it and I don't like it because it limits how much I can arch. However, for some people, especially if you are a more flatter back bencher, then play around with wearing a belt when you bench and that might help you be tighter. However, adding a belt won't add like 20 or 30 pounds to your bench. It adds a very small percentage, unlike how it does for squat and deadlift. So anyway, yeah, some people use a belt, I don't, but you can play around with it. Lastly, you can use some chalk on your hands if you find your grip sliding out throughout the reps. Sometimes if I'm really sweaty that day, then my grip would slide out. So that's when I use some chalk to make sure my grip stays in place. And as always, before you lift anything, make sure you are warming up properly. If you want to see how to warm up, check out this video here where I go over my full warm up routine. Okay, so last thing before we get started, I just want to say I compete in the Federation USAPL, so USA Powerlifting. And each federation has different rules and regulations, but for all competition benching, you have to pause at the bottom and wait for them to give you the press command. Also, you want your glutes to be on the bench during the whole lift, so they can't lift up when you press the bar. So for USAPL, you want your whole foot to be planted on the ground throughout the whole lift. I know in USPA, which is another federation, they're fine with only having your toes on the ground, but for USAPL, you want your whole foot to be on the ground. And also, in general, I would recommend having your whole foot on the ground because it gives you the most leg drive. And lastly, you cannot grip wider than the rings on the bar. So there are near links on the bar and there's like rings and your finger has to touch the ring or be inside of the rings. And also just make sure that it's a bar with standardized measurements because I know at my logo gym, the bars are different and the rings are more on the inside. So I actually grip outside the rings at my logo gym, but at home, since the rings are the correct distances, then I grip on the rings. So be touching the rings or inside the rings. You can't go outside of the rings. Okay, so next we're gonna talk about safety and setup. First of all, you wanna set your rack height so you can easily unrack the bar with just locking out your elbows. You don't want to do too much work and waste your energy, but also you don't want to overextend your arms and lose your tight positioning. You also want to make sure you have the same weight on both sides of the bar and you have the bar centered on the rack. If you don't have a spotter, I would recommend having safety pins on the side. If you arch, you can set the safety so you can arch higher than the safeties when you are completing the bench press, but you are under the safeties when you are not arching. So if you fail the lift, you can just unarch your back and the bar will be on the safeties and not on you and you could crawl out. However, if you don't have any safeties, then I would suggest having a spotter. A spotter can lift out the way for you in the beginning and also they can help you lift the bar up if you fail the lift. 
but make sure you tell your spotter your specific instructions before they spot you, especially if it's someone that does not power lift. A lot of people like to help the lifter if it's a really hard lift. You don't want anyone helping you if it's hard. You only want them helping you if you cannot get it up. So if it's really slow but it's still going up, they should not help you and should not touch the bar. So make sure before you have a spotter spot you, make sure you tell them that and make sure they understand it really clearly. Lastly, if you don't have safeties or spotters, which I really don't recommend doing, unless if you know it's a weight you can easily hit, I would recommend not putting clips on the side of your bar. So if you fail to lift, you can rotate the bar and dump the plates off each side and then the bar will be empty and you could just press the empty bar up. But this is the last resort if you don't have spotters or safeties. Okay, so next we're gonna talk about why you should arch when you bench press. When you arch your back when bench pressing, you can maximize load, minimize injury risk, and optimize overall pec recruitment. So shoulder injuries are the most popular type of injuries when benching, but the way to prevent overusing your shoulders when benching is to make sure your scapulas are retracted throughout the whole lift and make sure your shoulders have something to lean on, aka the bench. So when we arch, we are placing ourselves in the slight decline position and we are actually resting our shoulders on the bench so they have something to lean on and we retract our scapulas. If you retract your scapulas properly, you will naturally be in an arch position. So everyone should arch a little when they bench because hopefully you don't want to injure yourself. Being in an arch position allows you to maintain the most tightness because of physics. So an arch bridge is much stronger than a beam bridge simply because the beam has a weak point in the center where there is no vertical support while arches press the weight outwards towards the support. So arches are really strong. You want to be in that position to be as strong as you can. For competitive powerlifters, it decreases your range of motion by bringing your chest closer to the bar so you have to move the bar less. Thus, you can lift more weight, which is the goal for powerlifting. So either way, if you are a powerlifter or if you're not a powerlifter, you should still arch to maintain a tight upper back and minimize your risk of injury. Next, we're going to talk about grip width. A narrower grip will have more tricep activation and more range of motion, while a wider grip allows you to use your pecs more and has a smaller range of motion. My recommendation is to have your wrists stacked. So your wrists are approximately over your elbows at the bottom of your bench. And for most people, their strongest position is where their wrists are on top of their elbows because you can apply the force directly upwards. As a beginner, I would recommend starting a little more narrower since you will feel like you will have control over the bar. But as you get more advanced and as you do the movement more, try widening out your grip because that also decreases your range of motion and allows you to press more weight. And also with grip, you want to hold the bar in the base of your hand, not in your fingers. You want the bar to be on top of your wrist and your wrist to be on top of your elbows. So you want the bar to be in this meaty part of your hand and not in your fingers because if it's in your fingers, there's this distance and that causes torque and strain on your elbows. And this is where wrist wraps come in. If you have wrist wraps on, it doesn't allow you to bend your wrist so much backwards, decreasing the stress on your wrist. However, for wrist angles, I find a slightly bent, so like around this angle, to be my strongest position instead of straight up. As I will talk about later, you have a diagonal bar pad with the bar, so allowing your wrist to be a little bit bent allows me to be in my strongest position. However, as a beginner, think of stacked wrist first, and you will naturally have this slight wrist angle when the weight gets heavier. Lastly, do not suicide grip your bar. A lot of people do this, and this is really dangerous because the bar can easily slip out of your hand. So please do not suicide grip. And it's called suicide grip for a reason, so don't do it. Next, we're gonna talk about the setup. So the setup basically sets you up for success. You want to get comfortable with the routine that you can do every single time when you bench and yeah so this is my personal routine you can play around with it and find what works best for you first of all I lie down on the bench and put my feet on the bench and start with my chin being under the bar next I grab the bar at my preferred grip width next I lift my hips up very high and use that leverage to retract my scapulas back and down place my shoulders on my bench and thinking about having my shoulders away from my ears and think of pulling my shoulder blades to my butt. And by doing this, I can be in that decline position where I can be the strongest and also have my back in a safe, tight position. Now your upper back should be perfectly planted on the bench and you don't want to move that. I make sure my eyes are right under the bar because if we're too close to the rack, you can hit the rack when you press the weight up. But if we're too far from the rack, it's very hard to lift off. 
Now I gently place my butt down just to hold the position and then I place my feet down but on my tiptoes. I bring my feet as back as I can and that allows me to keep tension throughout my whole body and arch a little more. Next on my tippy toes, I put my butt up before unracking the bar. And with this setup, I can unrack the bar without losing tightness. Next, I take a deep breath and unrack the bar with my butt off the bench. I place my glutes down and my heels down and I move my feet out if needed to make sure my butt is on the bench. And unrack with your lats and feel like it's a pullover. I like to keep my legs close to the bench and externally rotate my feet out to make sure my heels are on the ground. Also, I wanna make sure I have a firm stance by kind of screwing my feet into the ground until I find the sweet spot. If you have a spotter nearby, they can hand the bar off to you and they can carry some of the weight out for you and make sure they're carrying the weight out and not up. If you lift the bar up, you can lose your scapular retraction and lose your upper back tightness, which you don't want. So now and throughout the whole lift, make sure you have four points of contact. Your head, your upper back, your glutes have to be on the bench and your feet have to be on the floor at all times. And with any setup and unracking routine, you want to maintain tightness throughout your whole body and make sure you are in a safe position for benching. I like to unrack the bar with my hips in the air and slowly put my hips up because that allows me to be in a more decline position and allows my body to move with the bar as I unrack it. And that really keeps my shoulders tight and stable. And now we are at the execution of the lift. So as always, breathing is super important. You want to take a big breath into your ribs and your abs and think of puffing your chest out. And as always, you want to breathe before you start the lift. Complete the whole lift and then breathe out because you don't want to lose tightness throughout the lift. On the way down, make sure to control your descent. Continue to think of your stacked wrists. And what I like to do is to squeeze my pinkies and think of bending the barbell to maintain my upper back tightness. A slight elbow tuck is good to make sure I'm not overusing my shoulders and to continue to maintain that tightness. However, you don't want to over tuck your elbows, so make sure it's a natural tuck. The bar should be in a pretty straight diagonal line from the top where the bar is on top of your shoulders to your touching point, which should be at your lower chest or your bra line. So as you puff your chest out, feel like you are absorbing the bar and not collapsing under the weight. And make sure to actually touch your chest since you want to train in the full range of motion. So now there are two types of touches. First of all, there is pauses, which I do since at a meet you have to pause your benches. And for pausing, I like to go for a soft pause. So I think of bringing my chest up to the bar instead of bringing the bar to my chest. And that really helps me maintain my tightness. If you are not competing and want to go in the more bodybuilding route, then touch and go bench presses are good too, but still make sure the touch is controlled and you're not losing tightness. You don't want to bounce the weight on your chest. So after the bar has touched your chest, you want to explode the bar off your chest and think of pushing your upper back into the bench and your legs through the floor. So leg drive is super important. Leg drive is where you use your legs to maintain tightness and maximize your strength potential. Your leg drive should be constant throughout the whole lift. It should not be only on the way up because you also want to maintain tightness on the way down. What I like to do is use about 90% leg drive on the way down and 100% on the way up because at the bottom of your press, you can implement that 10% and try to explode the bar off your chest. So there are two main types of leg drive. There's the down and the forward. So having leg drive go straight down is good for people who arch a lot and have their feet close to the head because when you implement a downward leg drive, it's really easy for your butt to come off your bench, which you don't want to happen. So people who arch a lot can have a downward leg drive because for them, it is almost impossible for their butt to come off the bench because they are in a super tight arch position. The next type of leg drop is forward. And this is better for people who have a smaller arch and have their feet further away from the head. And for forward leg drive, you should be able to literally move yourself across the bench if you have no weight on the bar. For me, I like a mixture between these two. I push mostly down because I have a really tight arch, but a little bit of forward. What I like about pushing forward is that it allows you to have that diagonal bar path as I will talk about later when pressing the bar. So as you push your legs down diagonally, you can push the bar up diagonally. 
So play around with how much forward and down you want and find the angle where you are the strongest in. So on the way up, allow a little bit of elbow flaring. Don't over tuck your elbows. When you over tuck your elbows, you're not in your strongest position. So you are just working against yourself. Some elbow flare allows you to use your pecs more and gives you more strength. Also, it allows you to use a little bit of your shoulders. Even though you want to keep your shoulders safe, it is still a muscle that can be used to help you throughout the press. But be careful, you only want to use your shoulders a tiny, tiny bit. Also, do not over flare your elbows because this will cause shoulder injuries because when you over flare, you lose your upper back tightness. Your shoulders go up, which is not good. So you want to keep your shoulders down and tight. So I flare a tiny bit and that allows me to be in my strongest position. Next, let's talk about bar path. Different from the squat and the deadlift, your bar is not straight up and down. Your bar pad is actually diagonal, and that's because your strongest lockout position is directly over your shoulders, but your strongest touching position is lower on your chest. So you want to draw a diagonal line between these two. However, you don't want to push the bar so much back that you hit the rack on the way up, but back enough that the bar ends up on top of your shoulder joints. Also, your upward bar path differs between beginner, intermediate, and advanced lifters. As a beginner, your bar path will be more diagonal, but as you get more advanced, you will actually see a more curved shape and you will see a pushback of the bar path in the beginning of the press. However, you should not try to force yourself to do the advanced bar path as a beginner. As a beginner, you should maintain that diagonal bar path and naturally as you bench press more and more, you will get that more advanced bar path. It should not be forced, but when you experience it, know that it is natural and don't be afraid when you push the bar back a little when you touch heavy weights. And at the top, you want to fully lock out. So you want to lock out your elbows, but as always, don't lose tightness and don't let your scapulas loosen up. So you don't want to extend your arms as long as you can. There's no point in doing that. Just lock out your elbows and keep your upper back tight, especially if you're going for more reps. Also, if it is your last rep, don't try to rack the bar during the press. It actually makes the movement much harder, even though you're trying to like put the weight up as soon as possible. It makes the movement much harder because you lose tightness at the top of the lift. So focus on finishing the rep as is and rack the bar as a separate movement. So for racking the bar, after you have fully locked out, just kind of throw the bar back into the rack or have a spotter help you rack it after you have locked out. And lastly, I just want to say for resting, I rest between two and five minutes for benching and it depends on how intense your set is, of course. I think it's better to rest more and be able to complete the number of reps and sets at whatever weight in RPE than resting only like two minutes and having your next set be very hard. And as always, make sure to put your weights away. And yeah, so that is pretty much it for how to bench press your proper technique. If you have any questions, leave them in the comments down below and I will for sure answer them. Also, if you have any video ideas that you want to see in this series, make sure to also leave them in the comments. Like this video if you learned something and enjoyed it. And also subscribe and turn on the notification bell if you don't want to miss another video in this series. Next week, I'll be going over how to deadlift. So keep an eye out for that. And yeah, so thank you guys so much for watching and I'll see you guys next week.